last week um, about if statements, and we're going to talk about else statements today and also about loops. Um, so as I'm speaking, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel, free, feel free to use the raise hand function um, or type your question in chat so we can answer that for you. Um, and just to give you a little refresh on what we were doing last week, um, we learned about conditional statements um, and specifically if statements. Um, so again, that is uh, what that is, is it's an action that occurs if something happens. So I can, we did examples last week and I'll just bring that up now just to give you a little refresh. Okay, so can you see these, um, this Word document? Just give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Awesome. So uh, these are the examples we did last week. So this is a conditional statement. Um, and we did, so if this condition, if, sorry, if this uh, statement is true, then this action will occur. Again, if, uh, if this is true, then this uh, will go, will happen. So if you do your homework, if that is true, then you can play. If the traffic, traffic light is red, then you have to stop. Um, if you are hungry, then you eat, um, and so on and so on. So basically, if this is true, then this will happen. Right, and uh, this is your if statement, and then this is your if block um, that basically has uh, has an action that occurs if it's true. So your if statement, then your if block here. And this is a good way. This is we looked at this last week. Um, so this is a good way to look at it as well. So if it is raining, if that's true, then we'll stay indoors. So again, your if statement. Then your if block, uh, if statement is false, then this if block will occur. If the if statement is true, then this if block will occur. So that's what we went through last week. And uh, we're gonna add on to this. Um, we're gonna add on an else statement to this. And what that is, that is to handle uh, if this, is false. So at the moment, um, this only executes when this is true, right? But if this is false, then nothing happens. This doesn't, this action doesn't occur. So we need to add an else, else statement. And this, this block here, will uh, happen if this is false. So what would go in here? So if you do your homework, if that's false, so if you don't do your homework, what will happen? Can everyone just type in chat your answers? So what do you think will happen if you don't do your homework, if this is false? Does anyone know? Yep, that's correct. So you'll have to stay indoors and finish um, and you'll get in trouble. So uh, any of these answers are correct as long as they make sense um, and they apply to this when it is false. So I'll add that in. So this is your if and else statement. So if you do your homework, then you can play. Else, you have to stay indoors and finish your homework. Your homework. Now for our next one, if the traffic light is red, then 
you have you have to stop else so what happens when the traffic light is not red that's correct Miriam you can go you can go so again this is your if and else this is if this is true then this block occurs the if block occurs if this statement is false then the elf else block occurs uh, so let's do the next one so if you're hungry then eat there's a few here actually we'll go through some of these um let's go through this one I'll just add the else to these and you can just answer these um, as you go along. I'll add numbers. So feel free to just uh, answer all these questions answer the else statement for all of these questions and we can fill them in. Yep, so for this first one here, the else is do not eat, do not eat. Second one, they are not it. Third one is don't answer the question. So if it is hot outside, then put on sunscreen else. Wear a jacket, that's correct. So if it is not hot outside, then you should wear a jacket because it's probably cold. And for the fifth question, if your alarm clock goes off, then you will wake up else you can stay asleep. Yep, stay asleep, continue sleeping. They're all correct answers. So um, all of these answers are correct as long as they make sense to the statement here. So does everyone understand that? Just give me a thumbs up if you understand what if and else statements are. Awesome, pretty, great work. If you need any help, just use the raise hand function on Zoom. Um, or just put your question in chat. Okay, so these are if and else statements. These are your conditional operations. Um, and another way to look at it would be here. So um, what we have here, is we have the start of the program. So this is looking at it um, in terms of a program in when you're programming it in Sphero or um, you're programming it in another device um, or system. This is how you would look at it. So you have your, your start of your program, then your condition. And this condition is the same as this one here. So this is your condition. So it's the same as all of these conditions here. And then if that condition is true, your if block will occur, will be run. So if this condition is true, then your if block will run. Um, and again, your condition, and then your if block, if it's true. And we have the same here. So 
these are all the same, your condition, then your if block. And then we have, if, it, if the condition is false, then we have your else block. And that's what we did just now. So we have our else, else block here, if the condition is false. So again, if your, clam, your alarm clock goes off, if that's false, so if your alarm clock doesn't go off, then you can stay asleep. And then you have the end of your program. So does that make sense to everyone? Thumbs up, if that makes sense. Awesome. So that's conditionals. Um, and I can show you a quick example um, using the program we did last week. I'll just quickly bring it up. Okay, so this is um, just the Sphero Edge app. Uh, if you want to follow, follow along, you can uh, grab your Sphero and then grab your phone and connect it together. Um, but I will go through that uh, later on um, when, I, when I talk about loops. But I just want to quickly show you um, the program we did last week and how to add an else statement to that. So if you were here last week, um we did this program which basically if we if we start it the sphero will um turn blue and also play a random sound um when it's not moving um and how it does that it it uses an if statement and the condition is if the speed of the sphero is less than three so if it's uh, not moving or going really slow, then this if block will occur. So that will, this will only occur if it's true, just like we saw on the picture before. This is the if block if it's true, but we also, we also need, we also want an else block to do something when it's false. And to do that, we can change this if if block into an if else block. So this one here. So if we change this. Now we have that our else on the end, and we can add our actions that happen when the statement is false. So if it's false, we can uh, make it turn red. And we can add that back on to our function from last week. So now if I press start uh, on this program, the Sphero should first, it should, because um, it's not moving when you press start. So it'll first turn blue then play a sound. Um, and then when I start rolling this Sphero or moving this Sphero, it will turn red. So let's test this out. It might be a little loud. Oh, and also make sure to connect your Sphero. Once it's connected, you can press start. So it's blue at the moment and it's playing random sounds. But if I move it, it turns red. So that's if and else. Um, and you can put a, many things here. You can do, it doesn't have to be color. You can do a lot of other things. Um, from the different blocks here. 
uh, and those are conditional operations. So does everyone understand uh, what conditional operations are? Put your thumbs up if you do. Awesome. So if anyone doesn't understand what they are or they need a bit of help, um, just raise your hand or put a question in chat. Um, and you can also rewatch the uh, last week or two weeks ago, the lesson from there. Okay, so that's conditionals done. Now we can talk about loops. And what loops are, it's basically, um, it's code, it's uh, an action that will keep repeating until we tell it to stop or the program tells it to stop, right? So if I wanna repeat an action, I will just use a loop for it. So for example, For example, skipping. Um, if I want to skip, the first action I'll do is I will uh, put the rope, throw the rope over, then under, and then jump. So these are the three actions that I'll do when repeating uh, the skipping action. So does that make sense? A loop is just a repeating actions. And in this case for skipping, we were repeating these three actions. So then after this third action has, after we jump over the skipping rope, it will then go back to action one, where we have to put the skipping rope over our head and then back around. And we we'll just keep going in a loop. Now, another example is uh, it could be every morning when you wake up, you could do the same action every morning, um, just like waking up, brushing your teeth, getting changed, eating breakfast, and then go to school. So if you do all of these five actions every morning, then you're doing a loop every morning. You're looping all of these actions every morning. So does that make sense to everyone? So loop is just repeating the actions until, until you tell it to stop um, or the program tells it to stop. Awesome, Preeti understands. So in this case, if I want the loop to stop, I will just stop, uh, stop using the skipping rope. I'll stop jumping and then I'll put the skipping rope down. Um, but if I want to continue, continue the loop, then I'll just keep going through the, each step. Same with this. If I, wanted to, I want this loop to stop, then maybe, um, maybe I will do something else here. So I can brush my teeth and then I can comb my hair. And now if I comb my hair, then it won't be the same actions repeated every morning. It'll be different actions. Or maybe if, if I want this to stop, I could, and it's the weekend, then I don't need to go to school. So then it will stop here. And then it won't be the same loop for every morning. There'll be a different loop and it will stop. So can anyone else think of um, any loops that they do every day? Any actions that they repeat every day? Can everyone, anyone think of that? And then type it in chat. 
we can share with the class. And the, these actions could be anything. It could be um, tying your shoelace. So if you tie it the same way every time. Pretty has breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. So that's a loop. You'll always have breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day unless you skip or you don't have a meal. Yep, that's correct. So day, sunrise, and sunset. Those three will happen every day in a, in a loop and they will keep repeating. Yep, so these are all correct. So these are all actions that we'll keep repeating every day. Um, and if we want to program this um, into our zeros, we can make a loop to repeat the same code until we tell it to stop or until uh, the program tells it to stop. So for example, if we wanted to uh, make a loop for the Sphero to uh, keep rolling around in circle, in a circle until um, it falls off your desk, then we can program that. Um, and the reason why we would use these loops is so that uh, we don't have to keep writing the same code over and over again. So instead of writing, um, eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. We can just have a loop for it. And then this will happen every day. So we won't have to repeat this over and over again. Right, so this line here is the equivalent of this. And I'll keep repeating. So now let's have a look at our Sphero um, and how we can add loops to uh, a program in Sphero. So can everyone get their phones um, as well as the, their Sphero and open up the Sphero Edu app? So when you open up your Sphere Edge app, just like we did uh, last week, we're going to connect it by going uh, by going to the the far right on the bottom, the steering wheel icon, clicking on that, and then making sure that your Bluetooth and your location are turned on, and then your Sphero is near you, and it should pop up here. Just click on that. once that's connected, you will see a little pop-up that has a green tick. Um, and then you can test it out by using the joystick and then try driving it around. Um, and if it's not driving, uh, if you move it up and it's not moving upwards, if it's moving in another direction, then you can aim it. Um, and just like we did previous weeks, we're gonna aim it so that the blue lights on this Sphero is pointing towards us, which is right here for me. And then try testing it out. And now your Sphero should be moving in the correct directions. And once you've done that, 
we're going to go into the programs, um, which is this icon here. And then we're going to create, click create program, the big blue tick, a uh, big blue plus sign, sorry. We can name the program loops. Make sure the program type is blocks. So this middle one here. And then make sure the compatible robots is your Sphero Mini. And then after that's done, just press create. And then give me a thumbs up if that worked for you. Awesome, Thomas got it working. Miriam, awesome. Okay, great work. Seems like most people have got it working. Uh, if you need help with this, just uh, type in chat or raise your hand. So we'll press create. And this is your program screen. And uh, so we went through these categories uh, in previous weeks. And for loops, we just go to controls. So the control category which if you scroll, it should be the fourth one. And then we can see that we have some loop blocks. So we have three blocks uh, for our loops. And the difference between these blocks is uh, when the loop will stop. So for this first block, this first loop block, this loop block will stop um, when it reaches this value here. So the value that the zero, it, when it reaches zero, then it will stop. And we can change the zero to any value we want. So we can tap on it and then we can press like three. So then now whatever blocks are in this loop block, it will repeat three times. So that's our value here. Um, our, our second one, second loop block is forever. And what forever is, is it doesn't stop. So it will just keep looping forever. So that one's pretty simple. Loop forever. And then our last one is loop until true. So loop until true is basically you'll have a condition here. So where the true or false is, you'll have a condition um, and you can replace that with uh, one of the comparators. So it could be this one, uh, like we used last week. So we use this comparator um, to compare the two values, the value, the first value being um, the speed of the Sphero and the second value being a number. Um, and we can do that same here. So this is what we did last week. This is the speed of the Sphero compared against the value three. And we can change this to um, any value we want. So those are the three loop blocks that we can use. And we'll use the first loop block today. So this one, again, will stop um, after repeating a certain amount of times. This one will, won't stop and uh, loop until we'll stop uh, until or we'll, we'll stop when uh, this uh, is true, when the comparator is true. So let's use the first one here. So this is our first loop. We'll add that to the program um, and we'll change the count to maybe four.
And now we're going to make a program that will uh, drive this row in a square. And we're going to do that using loops. So we have our loop here, we connect it to our start program block. Um, and then for the Sphero to drive, uh, we have to use the movements category. So go back to the movements category, the very first one. And then it's just the first block here, the roll block. And just connect that up. And then again, these three values are basically direction. Um, and this one is the speed. And then this one is uh, the how many, the duration. So how many, how long you want it to drive for. And we're going to change the direction to, if we scroll to sensors, we're going to change it to heading. This one here, again, it's in sensors, sensors category. Just click that and then scroll along until you find heading. Now, each one of these sensors is something about the Sphero. So like uh, a feature of the Sphero. So like the speed of the Sphero, the, the color of the LED of the Sphero, um, the, the way the Sphero is facing, um, how fast the Sphero is going. So each of these is like an, uh, a feature of the Sphero. And we're gonna use the heading. So what heading is, it's the current, uh, current degree that it, the Sphero is facing. So if it's your Sphero, if it's facing forward, then your heading will be zero degrees because uh, zero is right in front of you. And then to your right is 90. So if this, if your zero is facing to the right, then this heading would be 90. And we'll just click and drag this um, in here. So at the moment, this says roll straight uh, at a speed of zero for zero seconds. So we have to change these values. We can change this to any speed that we want. Um, and this really depends on how far this, how much room you have on your desk or on the floor. But I'll add my, I'll put mine to 60, 67. And then I can do roll for one second. So now, this Sphero will, uh, will keep rolling straight ahead. And if since we're programming the Sphero to roll in a square, we need to do something, we need to add something to the heading to change its direction. Because at the moment it's zero degrees, so just roll straight, which means for it to roll in a square, we need to add 90 degrees to it, right? So if it rolls straight ahead, plus 90 to the degrees will be right. Then plus 90 again will be down. So 180 degrees. And then plus 90 again would be 270 degrees, which is to your left. And then your sphero will roll in a square. So to add 90 degrees to this heading, we'll go to operators. So the operators category here, And basically each of these operator blocks uh, is, is doing something to different values. And that could be like uh, adding, could be subtracting, um, could be combining them together. And we're gonna use this first operator here, the one with two zeros plus and a plus. This first one here. And now this block, this block can be used to, for adding uh, two values together. 
minusing, timesing, dividing. Um, there's a lot of things that this block can do. And we're going to use it to add 90 degrees. So if we drag the heading into where the first value is and connect that up. And now we want to add a 90 to it. So we tap the second value, type in 90. And then we can put it back in uh, where the first value is on the roll. Now, once everyone has this, you can press start and make sure your sphero is aimed properly. But once you press start, your sphero should roll in a square. So test that out and see if that works for you. And then give me a thumbs up if that works. Awesome, Preeti got it working. Great job. If anyone needs any help, just raise your hand. Um, we'll type in chat. So when you press start, it will roll forward uh, in a, and then it'll roll into a square, um, but it rolls pretty quickly. So it, it goes straight away from uh, forward, then straight away to right. Um, and if we want it to roll a little slower or make it pause when it reaches the corner, we can add a delay to it. So back into the controls. And the first block here is delay. And what delay does is what basically, um, this is basically how many seconds before it performs the next action, the next block. So if we put the delay here, what this will do is it will wait for at the moment it's zero seconds before doing the next loop. And remember each loop is rolling in a different direction. So if we change this to one, so now we will wait one second before changing directions. So go ahead and start that. And um, I know we're going through a lot of different blocks. Um, and if you don't know what a block does or you need any help, you can always uh, click and hold on the block and then press block help. And then it will have a little description of what the block does. And then you can also click learn more um, to see how to use a block. So for the delay, delays the execution of the next block for a number of seconds. And we have a loops. If we press and hold this, click block help, it'll tell us what the loop does. Um, and this is the same for all of these other blocks. So you can go through each of them um, and then you can find out what they do and use them in a program.
now if we want to, we can add a lot of different things to this loop. We can add some color to it. So when it rolls, it'll be red. We can add a random sound. Add a random sound here. So now every, every time it moves, when it reaches, when it stops, it will play a random sound. So that's pretty cool. You can change this to um, whatever sound you want as well. Or you can do a color or you can um, make it drive in a different direction. Okay, so now that everyone has this, let's try, since this is rolling in a square, let's try making these sphero roll in a triangle. Does anyone know how to do that? Let's see if anyone can do it and then uh, post in chat or give a thumbs up if you've done it and then we can share it with the class. So again, we want to try change this program, which at the moment it's rolling the sphero in a square. We're going to try to change this program to roll the sphero in a circle, in a, in a triangle.
So how did everyone go with that? Preeti, you got it working? Do you want to show it to the class? Oh, awesome, Preeti. Can you, can you press start? Can, can you see the, um, can we see the Sphero or is it too hard to move your camera? Great work. Yeah, that was a triangle. Good job, Preeti. Did anyone else get it working? So if you need help to get it working, I'll just show you my screen. Okay, so the way to change this um, so that this zero drives in a triangle is we first have to change the loop. So at the moment it's looping four times and each time it's a different side of the square, right? And a square has four sides. But this time we want a triangle and a triangle only has three sides. So we want to loop this three times instead of four times. So we'd first change this to three. So now that's, that's set three. So it will go, uh, it will drive each time uh, for, the diff for each side of the triangle. And now we also want to change the angle that it's driving in. So for a square, it would be 90 degrees because it's straight ahead, um, straight to the right, uh, straight down and straight left. So that's 90 degrees. But for a triangle, it's a bit um, diagonal, right? So it's not exactly straight. Um, it's a bit to the side and the degree for that is 60 degrees because each side of an equilateral triangle adds up to 180 degrees, which means that each side would be 60 degrees. So now if you press start on this, it should drive in a triangle. Yep, pretty 135 degrees works well. Um, but if you just put in, if you put in 60 degrees, then it'll be like a much more even triangle. So I think the 130 degrees, 35 degrees you put in, um, that would make the triangle are the angles of the triangle a bit larger? Um, but if we put 60 degrees, then it'll be a nice, nicely even triangle. So go ahead and try this.
And you can play around with the angle, the degrees as well, to see how it changes. The direction the sphere drives in. Okay, yeah, so one, 120 would be a perfect triangle. So 120 degrees. So I hope everyone got that. So give me a thumbs up if you got that working. Thomas got it working. I know Preeti got it working. Great job. Miriam, great work. Great work, everyone. So I think that's about all we have for today. Um, so I hope everyone understands a bit more about if and else statements and conditionals, um, as well as loops and how to use those um, in this Sphero, as well as apply them to real life. Okay, everyone, I think that's conclude the lesson for today. Um, please remember to join us for the next lessons. I'm going to unmute everyone to say goodbye to Raymond. Yeah. Happy holiday. Hello. Bye, everyone. Have a good holiday. Bye. 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 Hello, bye. Hello, bye. Hello, bye. Hello, bye. Goodbye. Bye.